Well hello and welcome once again to this video channel. My name is Peter Waters, uh, amateur radio call sign, Golf 3 Oscar, Juliet Victor, G30JV. A lot of the videos on this channel that I do are really prompted by questions from uh, fellow hams and uh, a question I got to ask recently from a newly licensed operator actually was he wanted to go out um, and operate HF Portable. What was the best antenna for it? Well. That's a, a very wide topic and there's many answers. And uh, as always, I suppose the simple and quick off the cuff answer is, well, it depends. But of course that's no answer if you want to know what is the best antenna for HF portal operation. Now, I've been licensed for over 60 years, believe it or not. And uh, I've uh, done a lot of uh, portable operation in my time. and. Uh, I've come to uh, learn what works and what doesn't work uh, in particular circumstances. So I'm going to answer his question and perhaps quite the same question that you want to, uh, the answer to based on my own personal experience. So <laughs> here goes. I think the first thing to um, uh, probably understand is that most people that go out and operate HF portable do it for fun. Um, it's the fun aspect and the fun aspect will only come if you make some contacts. If you go out and you operate and you come back with zero contacts, well okay you, you could argue you had a bit of fun but it's not the same as working some stations, it's rather like going out fishing and not catching any fish and you come back and you think well okay it's not, it wasn't a bad day, I got out in the sunshine but I really didn't catch any fish. And so what I'm going to try and do is to perhaps help you to have more success. I think if you're going to operate um, HF Portable the, the choice for a lot of people is to run QRP anyway because it's so much easier. Um, 5 or 10 watts is fairly easy to do on batteries and if you're going to operate high power with bigger batteries then probably you're going to have more success anyway so it really is key um, the antenna is key if you're going to operate um, at low power and uh, from my experience um, the majority of people that go out and operate HF portable uh, operate low power. I personally use the little Ellicraft KX2 which will give me up to 10 watts. A lot of people will use the uh, FT817 or the FT818 which will give you up to 5 watts or 6 watts with the 818. And I guess quite a few people will be using the IC705 when it comes along. There are other QRP transceivers, of course, as well. But we're talking about power levels of around about 10 watts maximum. I personally try to uh, travel light. And uh, um, quite a few times I've used some commercial antennas. Uh, this is the uh, coil, loading coil from the buddy stick where you've got a short in point that goes up and down there and you, you, you plug um, little sockets in there and you can just change band by uh, changing the tap. Uh, the good thing about that is that um, if you get it right you do, don't need an ATU, it will give you a good match without an ATU. Another antenna which I have used is the uh, Ellicraft, the AX, uh, AX1. In actual fact this, this, this is very small, take the whip off. Um, screw it, it comes off. Um, that is your HF antenna for 20 meters and for 17 meters. Um, you can also get a loading coil for 40 meters, but that, how compact is that? <laughs> so we're talking about, at the moment, um, short whips, short loaded whips. And with a short loaded whip, as I say, you don't need an antenna tuner. And I, I try to avoid antenna tuners these days because it's it's easier um, and it's more immediate and uh, my experience is if you need an ATU to resonate the antenna when you're out operating portable very often you don't get particularly good results you know the antenna's not you end up with a sort of a random length of wire and this sort of thing um, and I've 
I've, I've tried to avoid that. I want, I want a, a simple, compact system that works without an antenna tuner. So the sort of loaded whips that are resonant um, are my, my choice if I want to, something really small and compact. With any uh, um, whip antenna, you do need a, uh, an earth or ground plane. And the easiest way to achieve that is simply to uh, uh, run out uh, a length of wire along the ground um, which is connect connected to the earth side um, and that acts as a ground plane and that's, 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 that is absolutely essential and don't ever t try to operate with a whip without having a ground connection or preferably with a wire a sort of counterpoise connection um, it just won't work so short loaded whips are one answer and they work uh, they work reasonably well I've always found that um, an alternative, if you've got a car and the car is nearby, is to actually mount the whip on the roof of the vehicle. Um, I tend to use a magnetic mount. Um, and that always seems to work extremely well compared with a whip um, and a ground plane. I think the reason is there's a big chunk of metal underneath the car anyway. And of course, it has the added advantage that if it starts raining, you can always pop into the car with the rig and operate it inside. So a, a whip mounted on a car is not a bad option. It certainly works, uh, for me, it works, it works very well. And uh, I've often used that, particularly in the winter as well when it's cold. <laughs> now one compact antenna that does work extremely well is the Alex Loop. And I'll put a picture of that up on the screen now. The Alex loop uh, I've used um, quite often uh, in, in the past. Uh, the advantage of, is, of it is that it's very compact when it's uh, all folded up in its uh, little carry bag. Uh, it covers 40 through to 10 meters. It covers all the bands, including the walk bands. And it doesn't need an antenna tuner. The antenna, when it's resonant, um, provides a very very low SWR and it's actually very easy to adjust because what you do is you adjust the tuning control at the base of the antenna and you'll hear immediately the signal suddenly pop up it's quite sharp the position of tuning is quite sharp and once you've heard those signals pop up if you just then look at the SWR meter you can then finally tr trim it down to almost zero SWR. So I'd probably flip over to FM or AM so I've got a steady carrier and just just uh, uh, adjust it so that you've got minimum SWR. That antenna does work very, very well. I've even used it indoors and uh, I'm, I'm quite impressed with it. It'll, it'll land up to about 20 watts anyway. So it's a good antenna. Um, it is, it's not, not, you're not cheap, you know, but it is very, very well made and uh, just bear in mind that, again, you don't need an antenna tuner, so uh, you're saving on ATUs, but it's a very, very nice antenna. Um, and also, it's, it's quite low noise as well, because it's a, a magnetic loop, it's, it's quite low noise. So um, I've had a lot of, lot of fun with that. And uh, if, you're, if you're serious about uh, QIP operation, take a look on our website, the, the Alex Loop. It may well be uh, the answer you're looking for. Now, I have seen videos and examples of uh, operators uh, putting up a, a sort of a full-size antenna like a full-size quarter wave vertical on 20 meters or a you know i don't know a, 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 a um, loaded 40 meter antenna which stands about sort of 16 or 20 foot high um, and then having to run out the radials and so forth it's not a favorite antenna of mine and i'll tell you for why first of all you've got to take a lot of extra paraphernalia with you. Um, you need to put some decent radials out. Uh, you've got to support it. You've got to stop it falling over in the wind, etc., etc. And it has quite a low angle of radiation. Now, I know that a small whip has a low angle of radiation as well in theory, but if you want to improve your performance and you do it by putting up uh, a sort of a, either a full size or near full size vertical you're actually not going to get the results that you expect so why is this well first of all a vertical has low angle radiation that means to say that the the uh, takeoff angle from the rf is is quite low which favors dx 
The problem is that currently, and very often when you're out, there is no DX to be worked. I mean, we are at the sunspot minimum at the moment. Uh, very often the bands are, are pretty poor. Uh, there's certainly no um, uh, chance really of working a di real DX and yet all your energy is going off at that low angle which favours DX. Um, currently, and probably for the next couple of years, you're not going to work much DX uh, on uh, your, your QRP portable um, system. So what you want is an antenna that gives you some higher angle radiation. Now bear in, bear in mind that at the beginning of this video I said uh, QRP operation is all about fun and you want to come back with some contacts in your log. You don't want to sort of put your fishing line out and not catch anything. So you really want an antenna that gives you higher angle radiation that will give you the contacts that are available. I mean the, the 20 meters is generally speaking it's open and you can work some German stations uh, you can work into Eastern Europe, uh, you can work down into Spain and so forth, you can work up into Scandinavia. The, the band is generally speaking open for that. And the antenna that you want for that is certainly not a vertical antenna. And this applies probably even more so to 40 meters where I've seen you know, ham operators trying to get contacts on a vertical, on a tall vertical of 40 meters and without too much success. And the reason is that the, they're, they're losing a lot of the signal that they could otherwise uh, achieve because it's going at too low angle radiation. You want, it, you want something fairly steep uh, for 40 metres and really 20 metres as the bands stand at the moment. Now last year I went to uh, the Republic of Ireland and operated there and uh, I stayed in a chalet and there was really, uh, it was really difficult to put up an antenna I did, I did take a short whip with me, but I also took a half wavelength of wire uh, for 40 meters. So in other words, it was 20 meters long. And uh, uh, one end was attached to the gutter end of the chalet and the other end was attached to a bush down the garden. I think the average height was about 10 or 12 feet. So it was, it was pretty low. Um, I also uh, took the precaution of cutting it in the middle and then putting a little joiner so I could actually um, disconnect it and use half the length. So half the length, which would be 10 metres, would give me a half wave on 20 metres. And the reason I did that was because I didn't know how long the garden was going to be and if all else failed I'd have an antenna that operated on 20 metres. Well, in fact, there was enough room to put out 20 metres of wire so I was able to operate on 40 metres. Now, that means to say that my half wave antenna would resonate on 40 meters and 20 meters and 15 meters and 10 meters, which is quite nice. And the good thing about an NFED half wave is that provided you've got the matching transformer, you don't need an ATU. Not only don't you need an ATU, you don't need any coax cable at all. So my half wave uh, for 40 meters, my 20 meter long length of wire would really sort of slip into my pocket. Um, and you can't get an antenna which is more compact than that. Now I know there's a lot of, lot, lot of uh, things being published about uh, NFED wires and people disregard them. Do you know, I can't think of anybody that has put up a, 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 an NFED half wave with a proper transformer and come back to me and said it's a load of rubbish. Those that say it's a load of rubbish are generally speaking those that haven't used one or they've just attached a random length of wire. And if you attach a random length of wire, yes, it will be rubbish. It's ab absolutely essential that wire is resonant. Get yourself 20 meters of wire, attach it to a 49 to one matching transformer. And in fact, I, I did a video about making your own matching transformer and I'll try and remember to put a link um, at the bottom of this video so you can have a look at that one as well. If you use that matching transformer and that length of wire, it will resonate on 40 meters, 20, 15, and 10. You don't need an antenna tuner. The good thing about that arrangement um, is, apart from the fact you don't need any coax cable, it's very easy to run out. You can throw it over a bush and so forth, but it gives you high angle radiation. And that is the, uh, that is the thing that's gonna give you contacts when you're running QRP 
as we are at the moment. Okay, perhaps in four or five years time, it'll bands will be different and you, your verticals will start to work in, in, in a better fashion. At the moment, they won't. Um, if you're gonna go QRP, seriously consider using an end-fed half-wave resonant wire with the correct matching transformer. If you don't want to make your own antenna, then there are commercial ones available. We've got a range um, of uh, uh, end-fed half-waves on our website now, um, made by Vibroplex in the USA. And uh, there's a full-size one, well, I want to say full-size, that is um, 40 meters long, which gives you 80, 20, uh, 15, and 10, plus the walk bands. Um, or there's the shorter version of all, which is the one I was talking about just now, and that gives you four bands. It gives you, uh, it's, it's um, 20 meters long, it gives you 40, 20, 15, and 10 meters. And uh, the, the, either of those um, will, will, will do the job. Um, if you want to operate um, just on 20 meters, then of course you can just use uh, 10 meters of wire. Now, in fact, the, 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 the 10 meters of wire will, will also resonate on 10 meters, but um, <laughs> I shouldn't get too excited about that. And this is some sporadic here about you won't get any contacts on, on 10 meters. So that really is my take on um, uh, QRP, HF operation, and what antenna you should use. The uh, NFIT halfway resonant wire is extremely compact. You don't need an ATU, you don't need coax cable. Um, it's got good resonance, good low SWR. Um, generally speaking, it'll probably operate right across the band. Um, you shouldn't have any problem at all in operating right across the band uh, with it. It makes a very compact system, but above all, it works. It'll give you the contacts. So give it a try. You won't be disappointed. So there we are. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope it's been informative. I say, as I said at the beginning, it's based on my personal experience. Believe me, I've put up a lot of antennas. I've had a lot of disappointments, but there are some which have given me great success. The NFED half wave is one of them. There we are. Okay, well, until next time, take care, keep safe, enjoy your home radio. See you soon.